Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Hello, and welcome to this Monday postcast. I'm Maddie Plow, and I'm joined by Nick Watts in the studio. We've also got Tom Siegel and Paul Binfield from Paddy Power on the line as well. What's your first off? You've sharpened up your act today, looking very smart after last week. Yeah, I got told off last week. It was a bank holiday, so I dressed down. Forgot about the uh, podcast completely. And uh, I was Shorts. In... Was it shorts, Wattsy? It, it was a T-shirt, and uh, quite a scruffy-looking T-shirt. And uh, Rob Watson admonished me uh, and said I wasn't allowed back until I'd, I got a shirt and a haircut. So I've got both for this I'm, week. I'm letting the team down today. I'm in my trainers. Uh, Tom, how are you? Good weekend? Oh, yeah, pretty good. I'm in my shorts, but then you can't see me. <laughs> which is good, <laughs> which is good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all right, uh, yeah. no problems, yeah. Um, Binners, what about you? Yeah, not too bad, Manny. I'm in shorts as well, and I, I saw you swinging. I saw you swinging on Twitter the other day, Maddie. Uh -oh. oh, I did I did have my driving range debut yesterday, yeah. Well, the, we, depending on which way you look at it, rather disastrous, but I'm just quite proud I managed to hit the ball. Maddie, anyway. you're not one of those people that puts... Whatever you're doing on Twitter, are not you? Not usually, not usually, Good. Tom. But, Good. You know, got to, got to start somewhere. <laughs> anyway, move on. Should we talk about some racing? Why not? Um, coming up on today's show, we'll be looking back at Chester, Ascot, Lingfield, uh, Leopardstown and Longchamp for the last few days. And we're going to look ahead to the Lockinge on Saturday at Newbury, of course. Um, but first, we'll preview the Dante meeting. Lots of people's favourite meeting this at York, of course, which kicks off on Wednesday. First off, we'll look at the Duke of York Clipper Logistics Stakes. And Binners, have you got some betting on this one for us? Yeah, we make Harry Angel a shade of odds on, Maddie. 10 to 11 favourite, 7 to 2 Brando, 9 to 2 Tasley, and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Now, what, see, I'll go to you first. There's been some big price winners of this in the last few years. Tasley, 14 to 1. Glass Office, 40 to 1. Tiddlywinks, 25s. Prime Defender, 20s. Utmost respect, 16s. Can anything get near Harry Angel? Um, I think if there's a time to beat him, might be on his seasonal return. I mean, we saw Ascot last season. He's a very buzzy kind of horse, and um, I think it was Blue Point that did him on his on, on his first start last season. Um, he's an interesting horse, isn't he? Because he's brilliant. He's explosive. He's he's great to watch. Um, and it's just Ascot he seems to have a bit of an issue with because all his four defeats, I think, in his career have come at Ascot. Mm. But he never runs badly there to suggest he doesn't like the track. I don't know. I, I don't know why it is. It might just be coincidence. But um, to cut a long story short. He could possibly be vulnerable first time out, although I did think he matured as the season went on last year, uh, became more tractable, uh, more easy to deal with at the start and, and you know less buzzy. So if he does get away on terms, I mean, he's got a quite a big um, advantage in the official ratings here. And I just love watching the horse, so I'd like to see him win. I think he can. Um, Brando's the obvious danger, I think, probably ahead of Tasley. I'd expect him to see off Tasley. He did at Haydock last season. Um, and yeah, he's, he's got, you know, I just love watching Harry Angel. So I really hope he, he makes a good start to the season. I'd love to see him put his Ascot hoodoo to rest as well later on. Mm, you mentioned Brando and Tasley. Obviously, Tasley's got some brilliant form on firm ground, but a lot of people think he prefers it softer. Uh, Tom, with or against Harry Angel? Against. Nothing, nothing wrong with him. It's just price thing, isn't it, Maddie? Eight mm. to 13 on his comeback with a, penalty, with a group one penalty. Yeah, that too. I don't like Brando at York. Don't know why he, did, he ran terribly in this race last year. I, th I honestly think Tasley has a chance of winning this. He won it last year. He's getting five pounds. I know Nick said he got wiped out by Harry Angel at, in, at Haydock. That was on heavy ground. He, let's not forget he beat Harry Angel at Ascot afterwards. He is one all, I think, with that horse. I know Harry Angel went a bit nuts, but I think if ever he's going to beat him, it'll be at York, where he, he, he seems to run better anywhere than, 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 you know, he was brilliant in the race last year, didn't he? Won it by two and a half lengths. Uh, He's also, I think he's unbeaten at York. I know he lost on his debut, didn't he, at York? But he's won two races out of his three at York. I think Tasley's got everything going for him. And if he'll ever beat Harry Angel, it will be on Wednesday. Am I making too big a thing about the ground then with him? Yeah, I don't worry about the ground with him. He's, I, I, he's run plenty of good races. I mean, his best form, you're undoubtedly correct, is on softer ground. But uh, he was second to the Tin Man, wasn't he, in the Ju Diamond Jubilee? And that yep. was fast ground. Head of Lomato, Labrisa Breeze. That's, that's good form too. So... Look, Harry Angel is it's a classier horse. He's a better horse. But first time out at York, giving a penalty away, I think he's too short. OK. Excellent. What about that? How was that? Was that good? That was perfect. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to you, Binners, <laughs> for the final word. Uh, I couldn't agree more with, with Tom. Uh, Maddie, I think has leaped a big price to beat Harry Angel. Uh, won the race last year. 
um, beat Harry Angel in the champion sprint, sprint at Ascot when he was, to be fair, ridden to to beat Harry Angel, but and then got done by La Brisa Breeze, but uh, nine to two as opposed to ten to eleven, definitely. Okay, moving on now to the Group Three Tatsals Musidora Stakes, which is also on the Wednesday. Uh, John Gosden's won the last three renewals of this race. He relies on High Garden here, who was behind Give and Take at Sandown last time. Binners, take it away with the show of betting, please. Yeah, two got uh, two to one High Garden for John Gosden, seven to two Kaylee's Dream and LGR, five to one Give and Take, eight Lubinka, and it's sixteen in the rest. Brilliant. OK, Tom, I was saying to Watsy before we went on air, actually, why do you think High Garden will reverse the Sandown form with give and take, if at all? I don't. I don't. I don't understand the prices. I mean, it's no. a, it's one of those. I mean, look, trial races are trial races and first runs of the season. You know, we've seen in the two guineas, in the French guineas and all these races, the trials form is a little bit irrelevant in terms of trying to find a pecking order. Mm. But... We're talking about prices here. Well, I don't understand why why High Garden should be a shorter price mm. than than uh, give and take, especially at your. I mean, traditionally, and it's not so much these days, but in small fields, it's quite nice to be on the pace. I think at your it has been traditionally, and not so much anymore because they switch all over the track and go all over s certain places. But High Garden took ages to get going at Sandown last time. Now it might have been. She needed the run. It might have been the ground was too soft to doubt it because she won on soft ground on her debut. Mm -hmm. But she looked, for me, for all the world, that she wanted much further. She wanted a mile and a half now. This is still a mile and a quarter. It's a, a York where I imagine, given the forecast, it'll be pretty quick ground. Yeah. I don't fancy her at all at the prices. I don't know whether give and take is the one to, to, to beat her, but I, th I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see enough from High Garden at Sandown to, for her to be a short price favourite for any race, let alone a Musadora. Mm, I totally agree. Have you got anything at a bigger price that you think could be worth a shout? Uh, to be honest, I haven't, had a, I, haven't, I haven't had a great look at the race. I thought Rafe Beckett's horse ran very well, didn't it, in the Lingfield Derby trial, the Philly. Uh, mm. but, but once again, it's only a maiden winner. And so I thought, she, I thought she was pretty short. I thought Lou Binker's probably got a chance her form last year ties in well with a few of the good fillies around she was sixth to lawrence wasn't she she wasn't beaten far at all mm. in the fillies mile maybe she's maybe she's the the value at the prices but uh it's not a race i've studied that carefully and uh i don't know much about the frankel filling what's he might know more about her el tijar or whatever but mm. uh you have to say david simcock had a similar filly win the french guineas yesterday so mm. wouldn't be ruling her out by any stretch of the imagination is it Ed Vaughan's filly? I think he's got one in there. I looked at that horse. I thought she was quite Dancing interesting. Brave Bear, yeah, yeah. that's the one. I looked at her. Um, what's he? Nothing to add, really, to what the boys have said. I don't really like the race from a, from a betting perspective. I, th I think they're right in High Garden being the wrong price. Um, I didn't see any particular hard luck stories in that Sandown race to suggest why she should uh, mm. reverse the form. And as Tom said, both of her starts have come with cut in the ground, and she's a Nathaniel as well. So she might well not be quite suited as well to, to this kind of surface as, as she was earlier. So out of the two of them, I'd prefer give and take. There's a couple of unknown quantities in there, like you mentioned, the Simcock course as well, to throw into the mix. And um, it's not a race I can, I can look at with any great kind of... Um, not excitement, that's the wrong word, but from a punting perspective, I'm, mm. I, I'm, I'm struggling to find an edge with this one. OK, uh, Binners? I think I'll go for Peter Chapel Hyams Lubinka, Maddie. Um, he was six in the Phillies mile, so that was very good form over a mile. Um, she stepped up to a mile and a half last time, was an easy winner on the all weather at Ling Lingfield, and um, this race will tell us if she's good enough to go for the Oaks. Excellent. Okay, moving on to Thursday now. We've got the Group 2 Betfred Dante Stakes. Um, I quizzed the lads before we came on air about who was the last winning favourite. Bonus points to you if you can guess that now. Um, Binners, take it away with the betting and I'll let you know who it is after. Okay, well, it's 15 to 8 Roaring Lion, Maddie. 7 to 2 Cross Batten. 5 Mildenberger. 6 Wells Fargo. And 10 to 1 James Cook. Okay, interesting. So it was, in fact, authorised in 2007. So that's a long time to go without a favourite winning the race. Um, Roaring Lion, what seed do you think he can do it? 
Yeah, I do. I mean, I've, I've been on these postcasts a bit this spring and I've been banging on about Roaring Lion a little bit. Um, I thought he'd run well in the Guineas. He did to an extent. Mm. Um, he finished fifth. I don't think I was any disgrace at all. John Gosden said beforehand that he thinks he wants the horse, uh, the horse wants further. Um, and he took a long time to commit him to the race. And when he did, I thought he ran really well. Still showed a few quirks. He ended up on his mm. own. He kind of hung left a little bit when it looked like he was going quite well and ended up fifth. Um, I, th I thought there was still plenty to take from that. I th we get the chance to see him now over a mile and two, which is what Gosden said he wants. Um, and longer term, I'm not quite sure where the horse is going to go. I th mm. I, I, I'm not sure he, you know, he'd want a mile and a half, a mile and a two. Breeder Jockey Club, maybe? Well, possibly. So we're, we're looking at this as a traditional kind of Epsom trial. Mm. I don't think he's an Epsom horse. I don't even know if no. he's entered. I think he probably isn't. But um, in terms of just looking at this race on its own, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him over a mile and two. Um, you know, he, he did run very well against Saxon Warrior in the Racing Post Trophy. That was mm -hmm. only, what, three starts ago now. And he got a lot closer to Massar second time out this season than he did first time out. And, um, yeah, I think the step up in trip could make all the difference to him. Um, and I think he's the one they've got to beat. OK, Tom? I've got an apology. Got an apology for you, Watsy. I was very disparaging of your <laughs> roaring lion uh, thing on the postcast a few weeks ago. You were right. I was wrong. He well, not that right, Tom. He didn't. He didn't finish in the first three, so you wouldn't have got paid out. Nah, but he ran a lot better than I thought he was going to run. Uh, he was not far behind Massa, was he? He nearly turned the tables. I think, you know, if he maybe been drawn with the other ones, he might have turned the tables. So, I think he's the form horse. Do I like the horse? Not really. Not really. I think he hangs. He's you know does a lot wrong in his races i'm interested in uh uh the uh mark johnson horse mildenberger Milden. yeah mm. i thought he was i thought he was pretty good at uh at newmarket took a long time to warn him out but he reminds me of permian and i think they say he's like permian i thought the johnson horse ran a cracker in the chest of ours dxb i think that went under the radar Ella Khan ran really well in the guineas. His, his three-year-old colts are going really well. Mm -hmm. I think he might be the one. I think, I mean, the only thing that slightly puts me off of Johnson's record at York is pretty dire for someone that trains five minutes down the road. I think it's five or six percent. I think it's his worst of any track in the country he, ri he runs lots of horses at is York, unbelievably. But the ground will be... The ground will be fast. It's normally soft there, and these horses don't like the shifty ground at York when it gets soft. I don't really fancy any of the O'Brien horses. I don't know, is Gayath going to run? Judging by the market, it doesn't look like he is. Mm, not sure. I don't think so. so and so it's, it doesn't look like a great race. I wasn't that impressed with Cross Batten. The form of his Epsom mm -hmm. race was given sort of a mixed, mixed thing, wasn't it? My mm. Lord and Master got wiped out, but the XB ran okay. Uh, I don't know. I think Roaring Lions the class and might win it, but he's not a horse I've got a lot of time for. Okay, what so about Merlin Magic? I throw him in at a big price if mm. he runs, because I thought he was really impressive in that Sandown race. Mm. I thought it was it was an Isha Cup. It was a handicap. He had a low weight, but I thought he was pretty good. But whether he runs or not, I don't know. He's got good form with the likes of Savannah Star and uh, yeah. Sam Gold. That race was a good race. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Binners, moving on to you. Um, how about about a bit of white mocker, um, Maddie, for Hugo Palmer. Um, second in the Craven, admittedly a long way behind Massar, but I mm. think the horse will be well suited by this step up to 10. And it was interesting that um, Suffolk Sorcerer Hugo didn't run him in the um, uh, who? 2000 Guineas. The Suffolk Sorcerer, was that? Suffolk Jeez, Sorcerer. I've not heard that before. Palmer. <laughs> yeah, White Mocker, he beat Knight to Behold um, at Newbury, so that's obviously good form now. Um, moving on now to the Betfred Middleton Stakes. Uh, Coronet is in this race, who beat Maury, of course, to win the Ribblesdale last year. We're going to have a replay of that, perhaps. Uh, Binners? Yeah, John Gosden seems to have a few favourites this week, doesn't he? Um, then we've got Coronet in here at 15 to 8, 7 to 2, Maury, 9 to 2, Smart Call, 5 Chain of Daisies, 8 Turret Rock for. Jim Bulger and it's 10 bar. OK, and what's, what's your take on this one, Binners? Go to you first. OK, I'm, I'm very keen on Turret Rocks, um, Maddie. Um, admittedly, she, uh, she was only six in the Moresbury Stakes, but she filled the same position on her seasonal debut last year and then won the Blue Wind Stakes at the Curra. And looking back at last year's form, her third in the uh, Pretty Polly Stakes reads well. OK, brilliant. Uh, what's he, Coronet? She couldn't do it for me in the St. Ledger last year when I tipped her up in the RFO. But um, do you think she can win this one? 
Well, she's normally running over longer trips, isn't she? That's the, that's the concern for her. She's kind of dropping back in trip here, and she looked like a real staying filly last season. She's got one good, really, really good piece of course form to her name. Of course, she's second in New York Strokes behind Enable. Um, so she's run well at the track before. It's whether she can cope with them, you know, dropping down to a mile and two first time out. Again, at 15 to eight, it's quite skinny. I think I'd be looking to take her on with what, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, that, that would be tight enough for me at the prices, bearing in mind she probably does want another couple of furlongs. Okay, Tom, you in agreement? Uh, well, I think she's a class above the rest. It's just, as you say, uh, the, the trip might be a thing for her. A lot will depend on the pace. If they go really fast, I think she'll probably win still. So I think she's a different class. But but uh, if not, maybe if the ground got really quick, chain of daisies from the front might be an interesting option for people, especially in run play in running players. I think she'll go short at some stage. But mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's all about Coronet. She's, she's totally different class if she's on her A game. Okay, moving on now to Friday. We've got a cracking renewal of the Mason Bet Yorkshire Cup. Um, Binners, how do they bet on this? Presumably Stradivarius is at the top of the market. Absolutely correct, Maddie. 15 to 8, and then we go 6 to 1 Desert Skyline, 13 to 2 Max Dynamite, Dynamite and Torcedor, and it's 10 the rest. Okay, Tom, we'll go to you first. Perhaps a little bit more depth to this race than some yeah, we have good been race talking this, about. Isn't it? Yeah, it's a very good race, this. Uh, I'm in the process of trawling through the Ascot Gold Cup. I'm doing a price-wise on it for the paper tomorrow. So Can I've been looking at... early an oh, early steer on that? Well, <laughs> not really, not really. But I, I have been trawling through the videos of Stradivarius, Torcedor and a few of the others and Max Dynamite. I think Stradivarius is a very, very interesting horse for the Ascot Gold Cup. Whether he's an interesting horse for the Yorkshire Cup on his comeback at York, at what did you say there? Did you say 15 to 8 there, Binners? I'm not sure. It's the same. Um, yep, 15 it's, to 8, Tommy. It's a, <laughs> the Suffolk Sorcerer. <laughs> what are you then? What do you What do you call yourself, Binners? Um, I'm the St. Ives Sorcerer. St. Ives, St. blimey. Sorcerer. I didn't know anyone lived there anymore. <laughs> Yeah, right. So, <laughs> St. Ives Sorcerer reckons that uh, it's a 15 to 8 shot. I'm not sure. I'm not sure down at, uh, at York first time out. I think, obviously, the plan for Stradivarius is the Gold Cup, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, he's, he, Johnny G is always always a target trainer. Uh, first time up, he was good last year, but it was only in a Beverly handicap off a mark of 78. He then went to Chester and got beaten, didn't he, in, the, in a handicap at Chester, yes, Stradivarius. Yeah. So, yeah, he improved as the season went on. My guess is that Ascot is the plan, whether he'll be fully wound up for this. It's the same as all the races we've done so far, Maddie. He's, a, he's, not, a horse I would ever, he's not a horse I would ever back a 15 to 8. I fancy him for the Ascot Gold Cup a bit. So what I price would, is he for that? I think he's 5 or 6 to 1. He's nothing massive. Mm. But uh, would you back him t tomorrow at 15 to 8? I suppose you could back him there. If, you think, if I think he's going to win the Ascot Gold Cup, then he's got to have a good chance of winning this. I'd, I'd be surprised if Torcedor ran. I don't know what the boys know, if they know anything about it. After his, I like the horse a lot. I thought he was really impressive at, in the Cigaro last mm. time. I thought they'd go straight from there to Ascot. If they come here, he's interesting. Willie Mullins is dynamite anywhere he goes, funnily enough. See, let's see what I did there. Max Dynamite well is going, his runner. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I like him as a horse, but he's an eight-year-old. Is he really going to beat Stradivarius? He might do. First time up, he's fit from the, he's fit from hurdling. He just can't jump, so I'd throw out his hurdles form. Uh, the rest, maybe Willie Willie Haggis's horse, William Haggis's horse, call to mind. I think he's a bit better than he's shown. He's very well bred horse by Galileo. I think he'll enjoy the step up in trip. He just mm. was a bit disappointing behind behind Defoe on his comeback. So. You know, he ran really well at Chantilly mm. behind Ice Breeze. He'd need to find a bit stepping up in trip, wouldn't he? But well, maybe he can. you say that, but he beat Count Octave, didn't he, at Goodwood? And then he was second to Ice Breeze in the group race at Chantilly. Ice Breeze went on to beat Vazirabad, didn't yeah. he? So that might not have been as bad as we all think. If he needed his first run badly and it was soft ground, then he may, you know, he's 20 to 1, 16 to 1 or whatever Ben has said, or whatever the St. Ives Strangler said. Uh, <laughs> Strangler. Uh, whatever he said. <laughs> Uh, so I, 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 I'd throw him in there as a, as a potential. Okay, brilliant. What's he? 
I think Max Dynamite's quite interesting here. It's like Tom said, ignore his hurdles for him because he just doesn't seem to like jumping at all. So he's had a couple of runs this spring. Mm -hmm. He ran at Punches down last time. Of course, Mullins was chasing the title then, so he's weeding out everything. Um, I think if you go back to his flat form, obviously it's very smart. We've got good, really good form in the book and good course form as well because he won the Lonsdale Cup here mm -hmm. a few years ago. And yeah, he is eight years old, I think, but he is quite lightly raced at the same time. So I wouldn't put it past him. And I think it's easier for these stayers to, you know, they do tend to have more longevity about them. So. I think he's quite interesting, you know, fit from the jumps um, against Stradivarius first time out, who may have bigger fish to fry at Ascot next month. So might just give him a little bit of an advantage. And I expect Desert Skyline to run a bit better than he did at Ascot last time as well. He's third, but quite a well beaten third behind Torcidor. So I'd expect him to get closer. But, you know, for the win bet, I think uh, Binner said 13 to 2 for Max Dynamite. That would do quite nicely for me. OK, the one I looked at was Marmello. Obviously, he went off joint favourite for the Melbourne Cup. Stuff didn't quite go right for him there. But what do you make of him? Do you just think it's a bit of a big ask? Well, you've just thrown another one into the mix there. I think it just highlights what an open race this is. And, you know, you, there's various different angles you can take into it. And certainly wouldn't dissuade you, uh, Madeline, from a, from a little bit on that. But I'm going to stick with uh, Max Dynamite. What can we call you? What rhymes with M? Don't you can't know. be the sorcerer. You've got to be, yeah. can't be the, the what, magician. What can I be? Magician, or Madeline, go, Maddie the Magician. Yeah, that's all right. I'm not sure I'll be pulling any magic tricks at York at this rate. <laughs> right, anything else we're looking forward to seeing at York? Your bet for the week. Uh, Binners, I'll go over to you again, the St Ives Sorcerer. Yeah, I'm, I, like, I like a horse called World Order for Declan Carroll, who did well with a couple of nice two-year-olds last season. Clinton um, on his debut at Doncaster, and that one's gone in again in the Lily Agnes, and you'd have to think, that one's Royal Ascot bound, so I'm looking forward to seeing this one. OK, Tom? Uh, I'm not sure, really. I've been having a big study up of the first two handicaps at York coming up on the first day. I, I'm a massive Tarantum Stour fan. I think he's really good when he's on a going day, and he does like York. I wondered whether he might bounce back from a bit of a disappointing run at Ripon on his comeback. He was really... Do you remember... Did he win? He won that big handicap, the Coral Sprint, at the end of the year, didn't he? And he, he's, mm. he's he's really pretty good at York. Now he's top weight and he's rated 103, and he but he's only five pounds higher. And I wonder whether the, I wonder whether he might be my one. Okay, what's he? I've got one for the, that that handicap. I think you're on about Tom. Or it's certainly the second race on the first day. I think Orion's Bow is a horse I was yeah. banging ah, on about for, yes. all the time last season. It just didn't happen for him. Um, he moved to Tim Easterby's yard. I'll be amazed if Tim Easterby can't get to the bottom of him at some stage this season and win a nice handicap with him. He's really, really well handicapped. I think he's off a mark of 90. I think he's something like seven or eight pounds below his last winning mark when he won a heap of uh, decent races, finished second in the Stewards' Cup um, a few seasons back. And a really good comeback run. I think at Pontefract he finished third, hinted that he was on the way back. If it doesn't happen this time, it's going to happen soon with that horse. I'm sure of it. <laughs> what's he, what's when he, what's, is he going to be jumping off that cliff? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Roaring Lion or whatever he's called <laughs> and, and Orion's bow. Uh, what do you think of his... I mean, I, I love that horse. I'm with you. I've been following him for years. But I, I, ha, do you look at course form at York? Do you see it as, a, as, a, as an issue for horses? Because I'm a big believer that the ground there is tricky for a lot of horses. Some horses love it. Some horses hate it. Orion's bow has run, I think, twice there. I think he's beaten two horses in two big field Ouch. handicaps. He's been absolutely horrendous. Because I know, because I've backed him both times. Because I'm like <laughs> you. I'm a massive fan of his. Always have been. And I just, I don't know. I mean, uh, what do, you, do you pay attention to that? Or would you throw it out? No, I, I, I would pay, you know, you're right to, to, to flag it up. I, you know, it's just a horse. Once you get locked into following a horse, I think you just, you know, follow them, in, you know, as, as Maddie said, over a cliff. And, you know, I've watched him's mark being reduced and reduced and reduced. I think of the trainer that he's with, who, who is, you know, brilliant with this kind of horse. And I look at that positive comeback run and, and, and maybe even for whatever reason, it just didn't happen for him last season whatsoever. And, you know, if he's turned over a new leaf and he's come back this spring and he's enjoying life again, then he's off a really good mark. So... It's kind of for Wednesday, but kind of for the future as well. That if, Even if it doesn't happen, then it, it is going to happen soon, I'm sure it is. It's one of those, isn't it? You back him and he wins, and you, and you, mm. you don't back him and he finishes last. You know, or you back him and he finishes last, and you don't back him and he wins. He's, he's one of those conundrums. I just don't know what to expect from him at York, but I, I like you. I think he's incredibly well handicapped. Well, we'll have to see if both of you um, follow him again then. Right, so we'll just go for a quick break now, but then we'll get stuck in to Newbury on Saturday. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus, 
Welcome back to the Monday Postcast. We've covered uh, the week at York and now we're going to talk about the lockage at Newbury. Guys, we've been moaning about this mining division for a while now, saying it, it's not all that strong and there's not a lot of depth to it. Is Adib, or Adieb, lots of people pronounce it differently, the saviour for us for this division? What do we reckon, Watsy? Yeah, quite possibly. Um, yeah, I mean, odd two starts this season, two wins, two easy wins. He, he looks, he's the rising star amongst them, isn't he? This is a new test. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what's the market been as at the moment on yeah, the, on the lock inch. Well, it's headed by Rhododendron and Limato, Nick, both seven to two joint favourites. Then we go five Adib, uh, six Beat the Bank, ten to Bill Prince and Lancaster Bomber. And it's 16 the rest. Mm, he, I'm, he mentioned Zabil Prince. I'm interested in him here. Um, bit of an odd market though, isn't it? You've got Lamato, obviously, who's used to racing at shorter trips. Rhododendron, who's gonna, who's been racing at longer trips. So it'd be interesting to see who turns up. Now you've heard the market. Any any more thoughts? Yeah, I, could, uh, I would give a small chance, each way chance, because it's 10 to 1, uh, according to Binners, on Lancaster Bomber. Um, he has had a run in, uh, in Maidan, so he is fit. Mm. Um, admittedly, he didn't dis distinguish himself, but, but a lot of Aiden horses don't first time back, mm. and particularly in the desert, so I'd expect him to come forward. The forecast is really important to him, and it's encouraging for the week. There's no rain around, there's a bright, hot sunshine. So the mm. ground should be, you know, quite firm by the time we get to Newbury at the weekend. That's what this horse really enjoys. And, you know, you look back through his back catalogue from last season and some really good efforts on good to firm ground. But, you know, second to Barney Roy in the St. James's Palace, just beating the length. And he's just one of those that goes under the radar, a little bit underrated. because he's not won, though, in a while. Does that worry you? Can't well, get his head in front. He's four years old now and they've kept him in training. I, I, you know, they could have pensioned him off, presumably, if he'd, you know, if he'd had mm. enough at three or you know, sent him to, the, to become a stallion or whatever. But they've kept him in training. Like I said, he's had the recent run. I wouldn't be su surprised if he outperformed himself at, and at 10 to 1 finished in the frame. Excellent. Uh, Tom? Uh, well, going back to your intro, very good intro, Maddie, may I say, about the, the, the milers. I think it's a bit worrying if, we're, if we've got Adeyeb, gelding, beat the bank, gelding. All these geldings at the top of the market here. Limato. You know, Limato. Mm. No, is he a gelding? I can't remember. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He is. yeah, yeah. And Zabil Prince, another gelding. Mm. So if, they, if they're, you know, they're not making stallions out of these horses, are they? So if they're running around winning our group ones, we're in a bit of a bit of a pickle here. I personally think that the that the one that is massively overpriced is Doville if he runs for Aidan O'Brien. I don't know if he's running. But his form when he was third to Ribchester at Ascot last year is as good as anything in the field, I think. I think you'll find that on Racing Post ratings, he's one of the top. And I thought he ran a blinder at Newmarket. The form, Forest Ranger boosted Forest Ranger it, beat yeah. him and Forest Ranger won the other day. Fast ground is the key to him. A strongly run miles, the key to him. I think he's just a big price. I think he's one of those. Price, is he? I think he's about 16 to 1, isn't he, Binners? 12. 20 to 1 for you, Nick. Uh, Tom, 20 to 1 for me, the one. church crook and swindler, or whatever you're <laughs> going to call me. Uh, I, I think that's a massive price. I really do, because I think he's, I don't know, listen, he's probably 20 to 1 because he's not going to run. Aiden's mm. got a few in there, so you've got to wait till he, he runs. But on form, he's not a 20 to 1 shot. No way on God's earth is he a 20 to 1 shot. Now, he's got a lot of twos and threes and zeros by his name, but there's been reasons for mm. that. There's been reasons for that. He ran in America twice. For example, he, let's not forget, he was third in the Arlington Million. So it wasn't like he was running terribly out there. Mm. Didn't quite get home, I didn't think, over a mile and a quarter. Uh, he was, th As I say, he was third in the behind Ribchester, and he ran really well behind Forest Ranger. I think a mile in, on fast ground is exactly what he needs. And if he runs, he's the wrong price. OK, Doville for Tom. Uh, anything else we're looking forward to seeing at Newbury or elsewhere this weekend? Binners, I'll go to you first. Well, I'm looking forward to the French champion hurdle, actually, Maddie, just to get away from these flat trials for a minute. Um, Willie Mullins has a few in there. You'll kill, kill your target, Bacardi's, let's dance, etc. Yeah, often produces a good winner that race, Watsy. Um, I, I did a special at the start of 2018 that the Queen would own a winner on May the 19th, the day of Harry and Meghan's uh, wedding oh, this remember weekend. This, yeah. uh, so I'm going to be <laughs> eagerly. Are you going, Watsy? Have you been invited? Uh, Landed gentry um, like uh, you? I'm not going to this one, Tom. I'm going to watch. Uh, I'm going to mix it between the racing and, and switching over to see them going down the aisle. But. Um, I don't know. I, I, I took this special at the start of the season, 25 to 1 about the Queen owning a winner. And, and there's six meetings on Saturday, four 
flat, two We've jumps. We've already said call to mind, haven't we? So there's one that could... Oh, I'm, no, really, I'm, I'm going to be busy scanning yeah. the entries later on and just hope that uh, somebody has, uh, has entered some of Her Majesty's <laughs> horses on Saturday and then I'm in with a shout. So I'm looking forward to that and, and Harry and Meghan's nuptials. And uh, yeah, so, so that's uh, another cause of excitement for me this weekend. <laughs> the many causes for excitement. Tom, do you give him a shout maybe? Do you think that could happen? What, him going to the royal wedding? I give him no shout. No, with <laughs> oh. the Queen getting a winner. Oh, the Queen... <laughs> <laughs> the Queen, no, I don't know. I don't know if he's got it right. I'll tell you one horse I do like, though, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Crystal Hope. If she runs in the listed race at Newbury on Saturday, I think Icon flies in there. It could be a good race. Mm -hmm. But Crystal Hope was the filly of Sir Michael Stouch by Nathaniel. I've got a massive soft spot for fillies by Nathaniel. We saw one win the Lingfield Oaks trial. I think we'll probably Enable. talk about her later. Mm -hmm. Enable. This horse, Crystal Hope, did everything wrong. She pulled. She went nuts. She did loads of things wrong on the way to the way to the start and yet she absolutely annihilated those two horses that we're talking about at the head of yeah. the market in yep, the Musidora yep. give and take and uh, high, high garden. garden she mashed them now if she's I if she wins on Saturday I think they'll, they're certain to supplement her for the for the for the Oaks well actually I'm not sure I say that but they're not certain are they because Crystal Ocean who I think she might be a half sister to mm. i'll check that out would uh, be the biggest surprise in the world would it with the naming yeah of well, she is, she, yeah I'm, by a uh, bit of deduction there yeah she is a half sister to chris lotion she missed she missed he missed the, the derby didn't he after winning his after running so well in the dante mm. so maybe they the the rothschilds love a winner at royal ascot don't they so my guess is maybe she'll be aimed at the ribblesdale afterwards she's got an entry there but i was incredibly impressed with her and if she runs at Newbury in the listed race. I think it's around the end of the card, 4.50 on Saturday. That is the one race I will be setting my video for. Okay, brilliant. Uh, again, we'll go for a quick break now and then we'll look back at Ascot on the weekend. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather or the gym. Welcome back. Now, Hayley Turner, of course, was back in the winner's enclosure at Ascot, winning the Victoria Cup on rip-off. What was your Ascot highlight, Watsy? Not sure I had one, really, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> rip-off. Rip oh, we, hold on. Well, <laughs> come on, Watsy, where were you? <laughs> no, I was, which, I, which royal were you dining with? No, I, I, I was watching on Saturday. <laughs> I, I watched the Haydock stuff, uh, so, some good jumping action uh, up there. And I, no, I, I did see Ascot. It's good to see Hayley getting back among the winners, isn't it? justifies her decision to give up the microphone for a while and come back to the riding. So, um, great finish. Uh, Jiri Feng, what a, what a legend mm, he is. Yeah. Uh, straight mile races or seven furlong big field handicaps at Ascot. You set your watch by him. Of course, he won the Royal Hunt Cup last season. Another fantastic run. I, I, I felt Bruce says never feel sorry for horses because they don't, don't have feelings like that. But <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did feel sorry that he got chinned on the line because he, he did a lot of hard work and I thought he was just going to hang on and he just didn't. So mm. that was a shame. But um, a great run from him, another one. The awesome most run. annoying race of the season ever by miles, that was. I must have spent four hours. I know, I know it's Riff Off's pedigree. I know his mum. I know his grandmum. I know his mum. I know the jockey. I know the trainer form. And I still didn't back him. He's a half-brother to speculative. Who did you back? The fourth or Sabador or whatever it was called. Or, oh, yeah. Ed uh, Walker's horse. Yeah, Ed Walker's horse. Uh, he's a half-brother to Speculative Bid who won the race. David Ellsworth's got a brilliant record. Bonnie Bray was second in it and Speculative Bid won it. And I didn't back it. And it's like 40 to 1. And you sit there throwing the pen at the TV. And the poor greyhound got sent into the garden. It was a disaster from start to finish that race. The horse I love, though, was the first winner, Maddie. Count Calabash. Ah, yeah. Never seen a horse pull like that and still sprint away from its field. That horse must have a stone in hand. If it's not a group horse, I give up. It's a proper, proper horse, that. If they put it away and wait for the Duke of Edinburgh handicap, nothing will beat it. Nothing okay. will beat it. I think it's a really seriously good horse. And that would be, from now, that's the horse I want to follow for the rest of the season. I think he, I think he was outstanding on Saturday. Endorsements don't get much better than that. Uh, Bin has asked got a highlight from you. Yeah, um, Eve Johnston, Helton, Horton said that the uh, Duke of Edinburgh was the target for that horse, so that'll be interesting. Um, just quickly, we're celebrating racing, but my good friend Max McNeil had Act of Valor run at Haydock in the Swinton Hurdle, and sadly he came, came down and, and passed away when looking like he might win the Swinton Hurdle. So condolences to Max. Um, yeah, Ascot, I thought it was very I, much I, with connections there. It was really sad. 
Yeah, that was indeed, Maddie. Um, at, back to Ascot, blown by wind, um, won the two-year-old race there. I think he, he looked like he'll want six furlongs, and, and he'll be interesting in the Coventry Stakes, which Mark Johnston said he'll go to next. OK, I think, Tom, earlier on you mentioned that we'll talk about perfect clarity. She won the uh, Lingfield Oaks trial, of course. Did you have something to say about her? Yeah, I mean, at the start of the season, I think Nikki's uh, publication there, the weekend, we did uh, horses to follow, and she was my horse to follow. So it wasn't a good day for me because I didn't back her either on Saturday. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I was miles away. I was off with the clouds, obviously, on Saturday. I thought she was pretty good, wasn't she? She's, as I say, she's one of those Nathaniel fillies. I thought she's... The thing about her, I think she's a little bit quicker than people give her credit for. I thought she won with plenty in hand. She's held up out the back. She, you know, wasn't a great race. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, but I'm not sure the Oaks is going to be a great race this year. I think La Tida or whatever it's called or whatever, you know, yeah. Do Re Me, whatever they call it. That one is obviously the one to beat. But on form and if the ground's quick, I don't think it will be because it never is on, on Oaks Day because they water it heavily for the, for the derby the following day. I think she's probably going to be the one to be, but I think Perfect Clarity's got a good shot because judging, you know, I think we'll probably talk about the O'Brien fillies that ran at Chester in a sec, but but I think she's pretty good. I think she's pretty good. She'd be, I'd much rather back her for the Oaks than Night to Behold for the Derby, put it like that. Okay, that's interesting. 25 to 1 binners, am I right? No, uh, Maddie. Uh, 20 from 50 after the race, ah. and she's now... And she's now down to 14 to 1. So it's a few quid around. Okay. few quid around for her, yep. I think someone was 25s. So maybe I'm wrong. Um, what's any thoughts on perfect clarity? Yeah, no, I like her. And I think Tom's exactly right about the Oaks. The, the shape of that is much nicer, I think, to bet on That's than the it. Derby. Um, with Saxon Warrior has quite a big stranglehold, I think, on the Derby market. But it's mm. very open. And Aidan said this morning, there was a lot of journos there today. He must have had some kind of press press day at Ballydorn. And happily, he said, it's probably going to go for the... Irish 1000, not Epsom, mm -hmm. uh, and September is going to miss it as well. So there's another two out of the way. So it, it definitely brings horses like Perfect Clarity into the mix. I thought she won very nicely the weekend as well. So yes, uh, I think there's much more mileage in that Oaks market. Um, there's a few that I'm interested in and, you know, a few at decent prices as well. So uh, yes, much more open picture to the Oaks than the Derby, okay. I would say. Um, and Binners, how did uh, how did the market react to Knight to Behold's win? What price is he now? Well, that one was 16 from 33 immediately afterwards, uh, Maddie, but now into 14 to 1, so a little, a little bit of money for him as well. Mm, I thought you could get about 20, 20 to 1 for him, which I thought was quite a big price. Um, genius ride by Richard Kingscote, who obviously had had a really good week winning at Chester as well. What's he not as keen on Knight to Behold? Is that just a case of Saxon Warrior being so good? No, I mean, yeah, he's going to be lucky to do a slip anchor and, and get away with those kind of tactics at Epsom, I would think. And I was just interested in the way Aidan played last week because I think he's obviously got Saxon Warrior up his sleeve. He knows that because it's already won the 2,000 guineas mm. uh, and it's definitely going for the derby. So he could just use these trials a little bit, I think, to feel his way around the opposition and see what um, Britain's got over here. And obviously Young Rascal turned up and he won. Uh, Aidan won with Rostropovich, who I think uh, isn't under consideration for Epsom. He's no. going to go to France, maybe. And again, he ran one here, kind of a marker horse, Kew Gardens, probably a long way down the pecking order at Bally Doyle, uh, probably a long way behind Saxon Warrior. And, and, you know, he still managed to finish second tonight mm. to behold. Um, I think he lost a shoe as well. Yeah, so I think Aidan will, will maybe have a, had a look at uh, and, and seen what went on this week using a couple of his horses like Hunting Horn and like the ones we've already described and probably come to the conclusion there's not that much for Saxon Warrior to, to worry about. Mm. I'd love to see this knight to hold in the Irish Derby because I think he looked he still looked a bit green and immature around Lingfield, changed his leads a lot um, and it was a good ride. Tom, anything to add? Uh, I thought, I watched the trials, I thought there was three horses, perfect clarity, I liked. I liked the horse that finished second in the Cheshire Oaks, forever together. I don't know if mm -hmm. she's, I don't know what Aidan said about her, I thought the way they backed her, uh, First run of the season, the way she got in trouble, she reminded me of those fillies that had won the Oaks before for Aiden, sort of came out of nowhere. Mm. But my star horse of the week was undoubtedly Rostropovich. I thought he was incredibly impressive when he won the D stakes. I think they're not running him in the derby because I think he's the only horse that they've got that could beat Saxon Warrior. I think they'll go to France with him because I think they might as well win the French. I, I think he's really, really good. Watch that race again and you tell me you cannot be impressed with him. He, 
cantered round on the inside, quickened up and went four lengths clear. Mm. I think he's really good. The form of his start of the season on heavy ground was was uh, boosted yesterday when Olmedo won the yep. won the uh, French Guineas, and that was his first run on proper good ground. And just the way a Ryan talked about him afterwards made me think. And just as style he did it, made me think that he was the star horse we saw last week. I'd much prefer him to the Vars winner or the or the uh, Lingfield Derby trial winner. I think he's really good. And my reading of it, and I could be wrong, I could be a two and two and making five, is that he's not running in the Derby because he actually might have a chance of beating Saxon Warrior. Wow, that's that's pretty interesting as they go. Um, before we go, you mentioned just then Longchamp, um, Tepa winning the French 1000 guineas uh, for David Simcock, of course, and Olmejo in the 2000 guineas. Um, track issues here, Watsi. As we saw, Christophe Sumion was not a happy bunny with this. Do you have any, any thoughts on that? Not really. I just find French classics in general. There's a lot of great races in France, and you know, generally I do love watching French racing, but I find the classics, the, the jockey club, and the, guin the two guineas races, I find them always really messy, and there's always mm. a lot of hard luck stories. And you know, you kind of watch them out of interest, but I've, I don't think I've ever had a bet in the jockey club or these two guineas races. And there's so many hard luck stories. There's horses that go over there. One I noticed, I was interested in the 2000 was Il Primo Solde of John Gosden's because I've been watching that over here, and he's kind of been in my tracker. Um, and he's one that mm. never really got a run, and you know didn't really do anything at all and it was kind of a wasted trip over for him so you know you, you don't often learn very much and I, I thought if there was one race yesterday which was more interesting it was the the Derringstown where the market spoke massively in favour of the Pentagon but he couldn't get the job done so I think mm. that's didn't go to Aidan O'Brien for once no it didn't it went to Dermot Wells and none of the three Aidan horses won um, and no, none of them distinguished themselves particularly either which I think just reinforces the idea as, as, as Tom and me both said that Saxon Warrior if you take Rostropovich out of the Epsom equation, his head and shoulders above the rest of the, the Ballydoyle horses. OK, Tom, any French reflections? I agree with Watsi. I find them funny races. I thought Wind Chime should have won the French 1000 by quite some way. She got trapped out wide. I, Andre Faber, I'm told, was so cross. He didn't even go to the unsettling enclosure because they moved it from this one track where yep. she, to the other track yep. and she was drawn on the outside and she had no shot and she only failed to get up by her head. I think she's much the best, but... What I have to say is I think French racing is at the lowest ebb I can ever remember. They don't have a stallion. They don't have any owners. They don't have any tracks. The ground's all wrong. And I think they've really, really got some issues there. I think it's John Clonshaw Roger can win some runners down from down in Poe miles away. But the rest of them are really struggling to find good horses. There's very few Galileos, Dubawis and all, or deep impacts running around there. And I think they're miles behind uh, Ireland first and Britain second. And I think you know, they got to sort it out because mm. we all need French racing to be back where it was. We love seeing those French horses quickening up the Trevs and the, you know, what was that? Those those Andre Faber horses, you know, uh, Mondure and the um, from the past. You know, mm. those sort of horses. They're brilliant. They're, they're just the type of horses I love. Those those sort of classy French type. I don't think we've seen one for a few years now since Trev. And I think they got, yeah, he was, but he's a, he was, yes, yes, I, I, I'm so, sorry, I, I completely no, forgot about him. No, didn't mean to, didn't mean to chuck I you under the bus there, just, him, just thought, cause the, the winner of yeah. the 2000 was in the same yeah. colours, wasn't it? But, yeah. yeah, but I, I completely forgot about him, but I think there are, but he, he's, he's, you know, without being rude, he's not bred very, he's a wooden bassett, isn't he? Mm. You know, they're not What would bred. you do? Well, I think, I don't know, I don't know, and I'm, I'm scared that we're going the same way a little bit. We've, we're struggling with, with owners, aren't we? I, I don't know if you caught Charlie Gordon Watson on the telly saying he can't find any English British owners for his horses which do, that he buys at the sales. Mm. And I think that's a bit worrying because if the, if the Middle Eastern guys pull out, and we're, we're really struggling because we've got no stallions really because it's Galileo, Dubawi, uh, maybe Nathaniel's coming through, but Deep Impact's going to come through. If we haven't got any owners, then we're going to go the same way as France. So we've just got to be a bit careful. I mean, obviously... British racing's fantastic, diverse, great, everything else. But just a little bit worried that unless we just got to be a little bit careful that we don't go the way of France, because I think they're really strong. You know, what's he'll agree with me? It was a bit of a farce all the, on, sun, on Sunday, wasn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I almost completely switched off from it, Tom. I, I, I did actually watch the races, but kind of a, from a real detached perspective. It was a classic, but you don't get excited for those races like you do the 1000, 2000 uh, Epsom, uh, Newmarket, sorry, or the Epsom Classics as well. It's, it's, it's kind of some way off that at the moment. And, you know, if we're feeling that, then I, th I think that probably permeates through the industry as well. 
Yeah. That's really, really interesting. Um, bit of a somber note, but anyway, um, just to finish, the finish us off, uh, weekend eye catch up from each of you. You probably already mentioned it, but just to clarify, uh, what's in? Yeah, I'll go on from Nottingham, Pretty Baby, oh. won the listed event there. Um, yeah. Really up and coming sprinter from William Haggis's yard. I think he's uh, bound for Ascot next. It won very, very easily and he's going up the ladder quite quickly. So Pretty Baby. Okay, uh, Binners? I'm going to go for Amplify, Maddie, um, for Brian Meehan. Um, second to Blown by Wind in that two-year-old race at Ascot. Mm -hmm. uh, the horse was 40 to 1. Um, Joe Fanning only only used hands and heels, and he served it up to the to the winner. And um, I expect to see him at Royal Ascot, possibly with one more run beforehand. Yeah, I chucked him in my tracker, I think. I'm in agreement with you there. Binners, uh, Tom, finally? Undoubtedly, shades of blue, Maddie. She won a maiden at Ascot on Friday night. She trained by Clive Cox. The two horses she beat were two of the fastest breeze-up horses at the breeze-ups, and she... Uh, she quickened up like a like yeah she was really impressive but go and have a watch if you haven't seen okay. shades of blue winning the six o'clock at ascot on friday i will be staggered if she doesn't go very close to winning the queen mary clive's done it a few times mm. in recent year I, what's he'll remember the horses but but she's take, didn't she? yeah she she's year. really good she has to be really good those two horses from the from the uh breeze ups were two of the the largest the two of the costliest horses from the breeze ups and she whacked them She's by Kodiak. Uh, she's, she'll, she'll go close in the Queen Mary, shades of blue. Okay, brilliant. So throughout this postcast, we've had quite a few ring endorsements for so many, so make sure to stick those in your tracker. And that should be about it from us for today. If you enjoy listening to these postcasts, please rate, review and subscribe to us on iTunes. Of course, on Friday, the tipping postcast will be back, so we'll see you then. Success ain't earned, it's bought. That's why at Paddy Power, we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app. Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18 plus,